Good morning, everyone. Today, as you can see, we're at the National Museum of Marine Corps in Quantico, Virginia. We are here on Friday, November 11th, Veterans Day. I wanted to first of all thank all of the veterans for their service and wish them a happy Veterans Day. And I want to bring you along with me so we can take a look at the Marine Corps Museum and see what it has to offer us. It looks like a very large museum. I would imagine that you'd want to plan on spending several hours here looking at the exhibits. Today they're having a few different ceremonies in remembrance of Veterans Day. So let's see what we can see. As we approach the entrance, a little bit of information on the museum itself. It is situated on a 135 acre site, complete with walking trails and a beautiful chapel. It sits on a site adjacent to the Marine Corps base in Quantico, Virginia, and encompasses over 115,000 square feet in total. The building's unique design was inspired by the images of the flag raising on Mount Suribachi on the island of Iwo Jima during World War II. The museum first opened in late 2006, and they now greet over 500,000 visitors annually. As you enter the museum, you will come to the large atrium in the center. Here you will see many life-size exhibits, which immerse you into different scenarios with sounds and effects, all of which help to tell the story of the over 200 years of history of the Marines, from the beginnings of our country to the present day. By preserving and exhibiting the history of the Marine Corps, they are honoring the commitment, accomplishments, and sacrifices of Marines everywhere. As you enter the main corridor known as the Legacy Walk, which leads guests into the exhibits and amazing displays in each of the eight galleries, it follows a timeline of major events and milestones throughout the history of the Marines. In the first gallery, The Making of a Marine, you will see the training required to become a Marine that explains how the recruits are transformed from civilians to elite soldiers in just 12 weeks. The second gallery, Defending the New Republic, takes you from the very creation of the Marine Corps in 1775 in a small tavern in Philadelphia by some of our country's founding fathers, a topic which we'll get into a little bit more later in the video, to combat during the War of 1812 and the Mexican War, as well as efforts to combat pirates and slave traders on the high seas. It also dives into the actions of Marines on both sides of the American Civil War. America entered the 20th century as an emerging colonial power whose Navy and Marine Corps served as a mobile overseas force in readiness. Set to protect the nation's political and commercial interests in an increasingly competitive and dangerous world. With the seven seas as our new backyard, Naval matters influence national policy as never before. America was drawn to your struggle for dominance of global sea power. In the third gallery here, called the Global Expeditionary Force, 
It depicts how the Marines moved into Latin America and across the Pacific as part of the expansion to defend American interests around the world. entered the war in 1917. After hostilities had been raging for nearly three years, the Marines were able to stop the German advance into France by using everything from aircraft to hand-to-hand -hand combat and succeeded in ending the bloody conflict by 1918. Gallery 5, World War II, begins with the attack on Pearl Harbor and carries us through to the occupation of Japan at the end of the war. Germany rapidly growing in military strength and territorial demands. British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain met with Hitler in 1938, and the two leaders signed a pact, giving the Nazis part of Czechoslovakia. <laughs>
This area holds a very special place in my heart as my father was involved in this conflict when he enlisted in the military before he was 18 years old. Thankfully, he did come back. Unfortunately, many others did not. In this exhibit, we are introduced to the first use of helicopters and jet-powered aircraft to combat. There are also displays that depict the amphibious assaults and the intercity fighting in the streets of Seoul. Here we enter the of Vietnam. This was the longest war fought to date, as the longest fought here from 1965 to 1975. Here we see wall murals and dioramas that share stories about the combat operations, individual Marines, and special ops units that were involved in this unpopular conflict.
Chaplain Stubbe described the ordeal of daily bombardments. Usually the fog burned off around the moon or so. And that's when the aircraft would come. And that's when the shelling would come, basically. As you enter the newest portion of the museum, which is still under construction, you are entering gallery number eight, named Forward Deployment. It is their hope to have things completed by 2025 in time for the Marines' 250th birthday. The new expansion, with a focus on fighting global terrorism and modern warfare, is contained within 80,000 square feet of exhibits and classrooms. Focusing on the engagements of Desert Storm Desert Shield, and a special exhibit on 9-11 and the more recent Afghanistan War on Terror. The construction of the new gallery continues the story of the Marines from 1976 through the most recent conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq, and continues to evolve, as does the mission of the Marines. To get everything as accurate as possible, the museum has put together a well-versed panel of advisors to guide the process. The plan is to tell the story of today's Marines both in combat as well as the humanitarian efforts that they are involved with globally as well as on the home front. Some of the new displays can be viewed from the second floor observation deck. Here's a very cool statue of a life-size marine. But if you look closely, you'll see that it's made up from a bunch of smaller marines all working as one. The museum also has its very own theater, named the Medal of Honor Theater, which seats nearly 400 people and was opened in July of 2017. 
Check the museum website for more information on what's currently playing. Now back to the tavern that we mentioned earlier in the video, the Tun Tavern. The museum has its own replica of the 18th century Philadelphia Tavern that is known as the birthplace of the Marines. I definitely suggest stopping in having a cold beer as you've earned it after walking around this enormous museum. This museum should make every Marine proud to be part of such a great branch of the military and make every American proud to have such incredible soldiers protecting this great country. I have to put it out there. This is an awesome, awesome museum that you should definitely check out if you're in the Washington, D.C. area. I definitely think that you should plan on spending about half a day here to really see all that they have to offer. It's definitely bigger than what it looks like from the entrance. Oh, and did I mention? It's totally free. I must say, as a veteran of the United States Army myself, I am very proud to have served alongside of these great soldiers. I am also happy to say that in November of 2020, the United States Army opened a museum of its own, not far from here in Fort Belvoir, Virginia, which I'll be visiting soon. And of course, I'll be bringing you along with me when I do. Well, that's all that I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed visiting this awesome museum with me as much as I had sharing it with you. If so, please consider subscribing to the channel. And also, if you know of anyone who you think would be interested in this type of content, please pass it on. I would love to get more people involved in this channel so that we can all explore and learn together. If you have any additional details or information that you would like to add about the museum, please put it in the comments below. And as always, I hope to see you next time, because as I always say, you never know what you'll see when you get out and explore with John.